SpaceX rolled out a bullet-like Starship immediately after testing the Booster 7, and this particular Starship perhaps will be used to test a condition of reducing air drag from the body of the Starship, and this one does not have all the flaps at the tail and nose cone of the Starship. Let's find out in today's episode, the test sequence SpaceX has to run on the bullet-like Starship, and will it be test-fired this month? Again, NASA has given Blue Origin a second chance by picking the new Glenn's rocket to fly its astronauts to Mars to study the red planet. Let's go ahead and discuss all this. SpaceX has rolled a strange stacked naked Starship prototype referred as Ship 26 from its Starbase, a type of Starship that doesn't have anything hanging on its body. It's just like a bullet. It seems SpaceX wants to develop another version of what can possibly fly in space, but this particular Starship will overcome aerodynamics and perhaps fly at a high speed. You can picture it the same way a bullet will fly through the air. Taking a look at the cone-tipped nose section, SpaceX started stacking this part in October 2022, and as at early 2023, the prototype had been stacked to its full 50-meter height and welded together. After about six more weeks of giving it the right fit, welding, and filling every obvious hole, Ship 26 left Starbase's High Bay Assembly Facility and was sent to one of the launch mounts formerly used for suborbital Starship test flights. Ship 26 was transferred and mounted on suborbital pad A on the morning of February 12th, just a few hundred feet to the left. Another prototype of the Starship, Ship 25, watched quietly how its sister Ship 26 was installed, and Ship 25, quietly resting its buttocks on pad B, stood comfortably while waiting for the static fire test of its Raptor 2 engine test campaign. Ship 26 is viewed to be months younger than Ship 25 and rolled out without Raptors installed. However, the 33 Raptor 2 engines were installed after it was placed on suborbital pad A, and they still need to go through several tests, like the wet dress rehearsal and the static fire test. All these need to be clarified before takeoff. Aside from the remodeling changes SpaceX has done on Ship 26, the bullet-shaped Ship 26 has three main differences from another existing Starships. For instance, it doesn't have any heat shield, and between 2020 and 2021, the suborbital Starship that has been developed are S-20, S-21, S-22, S-24, S-25, and all these prototypes have been fitted with 10,000 units of black ceramic heat shield tiles, contrary to Ship 26, which does not have any ceramic tiles. Also, the Ship 26 has no flap. All other denomination of the Starship, ranging from S8 to S25, the company has completed, has had four large flaps and form-fitting aero covers installed. The primary function of the flaps attached to the Starship is to steer and orient themselves during orbital re-entries, and also to control themselves during exotic landing maneuvers, which require ships to freefall belly down like a human skydiver, and aggressively flip into a vertical orientation for a perfect horizontal landing. What can also get us confused is that Ship 26 has no payload bay of any kind. Its outer body is finished with a smooth, featureless Starship that looks like a steel ball and it is not also designed to return to Earth. That means it cannot return to Earth as soon as it lifts off. This kind of feature makes it look seem like a multi-month waste of hard work. But don't worry, SpaceX has set a special purpose for Ship 26. Again, you will want to ask another question, like, does it mean the Ship 26 will no longer come back to Earth as soon as it lifts off? Yes, that's true. It will no longer come back to Earth. And that literally means that SpaceX will only send it to space, but will not land it back on Earth. The Ship 26 prototype also does not have any hardware needed for docking into the ISS or propellant transfer features, though it has propellant tanks that are the same size as past ship. This means that for it to survive in orbit for days or weeks, it would need some kind of power source, typically solar systems configured, but that has not yet been integrated yet. Ship 26 could also be used for miscellaneous systems testing. It may be the ship which SpaceX will want to waste, that is, test it on orbital launches and see how it behaves up there before sending the right starship for the mission. However, SpaceX still has an option to use Ship 24 and 25, since both have had their payload bays permanently sealed, meaning they'll only be useful as orbital test vehicles. That raises the obvious question, why does the Ship 26 exist? There are a few obvious reasons. SpaceX plans to develop at least four types of starships. Hence, the crew and the tanker ships will have heat shields and flaps, but Ship 
which is only designed to land on the moon will have no flaps or heat shield and will be painted white and insulated. Therefore, Ship 26 could exist primarily to demonstrate that a starship with no flaps or heat shield tiles is aerodynamically stable during launch. Also, we all await to see Ship 26 will be pressurized and loaded with liquid nitrogen, liquid oxygen, then undergo wet dress rehearsal and be installed with systems that will simulate thermal and mechanical loads it will experience when filled with propellant. If it sees luck and passes those tests, SpaceX will have to go ahead and conduct the static fire test on it. Ship 27 appears to be nearly identical, with no heat shield or flaps. However, there is evidence that Ship 27 will have the first operational payload bay on a starship and could be used to deploy full-size Starlink V2 satellites in addition to whatever other testing SpaceX desires. For the time being, SpaceX's priority is to prepare Ship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 for the first orbital launch attempt of Starship, followed by Ship 25 and Booster 9 for the second orbital test flight. Until then, Ships 26 and 27 will most likely remain a mystery. Now, let's talk about another big and surprising news. NASA has finally given Blue Origin a second chance to launch its astronauts to Mars inside the new Glenn rocket. Now Jeff Bezos finally has his way to work with NASA, though Bob Smith, the current CEO of Blue Origin, haven't wowed the world ever since Jeff stepped down as CEO of the company. But this new contract assigned to Blue Origin should be an opportunity for the company to prove its abilities to the world, and not leaving Blue Origin disappointed. However, Blue Origin's recently developed New Glenn heavy lift rocket will launch with NASA's dual spacecraft escape aid mission from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Station in late 2024, according to NASA. It will take about 11 months for the identical twin escape aids, which stand for Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers, to reach Mars orbit, where they will collect data on the planet's magnetosphere and its interactions with solar radiation. New Glenn is named after pioneering NASA astronaut John Glenn, who became the first American to orbit Earth in 1962. It has a reusable first stage and is designed to fly on at least 25 missions. However, Escape Aid provides Blue Origin with a valuable government customer as Bezos Rocket Company begins to compete with SpaceX, United Launch Alliance, and other major players for flights to low Earth orbit and beyond. However, Blue Origin must first prove to NASA that they are capable of completing the task. That being said, what is confusing is that Blue Origin wasn't actually working on any Mars project. Their goal was on the moon, yet the Blue Origin hasn't even landed on the moon. But NASA perhaps intends to put the company in a tight corner by giving it a project that seems to be a hard nut to crack. But Origin will have to face this big challenge at this time by doing whatever it will take to land the New Glenn rocket on Mars. So, it will look like a direct competition between SpaceX and Blue Origin. Now let's all watch which of these companies will first land on the moon, then we name whichever company that win as the god of Mars. Do you think Blue Origin will land on Mars before SpaceX? SpaceX may have a little advantage because they have finally launched their 10 million pounds of propellant Starship Super Heavy to orbit. Click on the video to know all about the details.